Hello and welcome to 18 WJTS Inform. We are very honored to have in the studio on a very tight schedule, Congressman Larry Bouchon, representing District 8 uh, in Southwest Indiana. And uh, Congressman, it's quite an honor to have you here. Thank well, you for coming in. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Well, we, we know that right now you, you, you just came from Washington, D.C. And um, the shutdown, was shut down, the government was shut down. Now the government's reopened, rebooted, so yep, to speak. Yeah, we rebooted it last night. <laughs> well, talk about that. Well, what happened is, is there's just a disagreement on DACA, the Deferred Action uh, for Children. Mm -hmm. And on the House side, we passed uh, a funding bill, a short-term funding bill for a month. And we also extended the Children's Health Care Program for six years and delayed three Obamacare taxes. But on the Senate side, the Senate Democrats decided because of the DACA situation that they were going to uh, hold out and try to get a solution to the Deferred Action in the funding bill, which we disagreed with. And so in the Senate, even though Republicans have the majority, you have to have 60 votes to move legislation. And so Republicans only have 51 votes. And, and so uh, it didn't pass on Friday evening. Uh, and that was the dispute over the weekend over DACA. But I think what happened is, is um, that uh, Senator McConnell uh, was able to work out with Senator Schumer an agreement to where they'll, ha they'll bring up uh, immigration legislation in the Senate. And then the Democrats decided they were going to go ahead and vote for it, and then we opened the government back up. Okay, and, and for folks to understand, the House can pass a bill that goes to the Senate, but if they make an adjustment, it's got to go back to the That's House. That's correct. And then you voted again. Right, which is what happened. So yesterday afternoon, the Senate voted on uh, a, a one-week shorter funding bill than we had sent to them, okay? So we sent a bill that funded the government for a month. They sent back a three-week bill because the Democrats wanted to a quicker turnaround on the DACA discussions. And so once they did that, we brought it right back to the House and we passed it and opened the government back up. And so now in three weeks, you're going to revisit this again? Yeah, I'm optimistic though, because I think we're going to get a deal on uh, the funding levels for the government. And hopefully, rather than passing a short-term funding bill, we're going to fund the government for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. We were this close to getting an agreement between the two parties on what the funding levels for the Department of Defense and other programs were. And I, I'm pretty optimistic that we'll get that agreement and then we'll pass actual what's called an appropriations bill to fund the government through the end of the fiscal year, which is the end of September, versus these short-term continuing resolutions, they're called, uh, which nobody likes. So uh, on the DACA side, I do think on the Senate uh, side, they'll get some agreement whether or not that's something that's acceptable to the House, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think they'll have some agreement or they'll have a bill on the floor before that deadline. So I'm optimistic that we won't be three weeks right back to where we were. Okay. Now, the, the, your thoughts on the economy. Uh, yeah. I know that the tax cuts uh, have gone into effect. They have. Um, but your thoughts on the economy and tax cuts? Well, I mean, all, every indication is the economy is doing great. Okay, we have uh, uh, record low unemployment, for example, un amongst African American population. We have a 17-year low in unemployment amongst overall. Uh, we have a stock market which, you know, the Dow's above 26,000 now. Why does that benefit everybody? Because everybody's retirement accounts are invested in these things. So, it, it, you know, people say, well, why, why does the stock market matter? It matters because everybody that, that has retirement plans, their retirement plans are growing. And so they're gaining, they're gaining wealth. Um, and consumer confidence is way up. You know, there was a pretty good Christmas season that we went, went through, especially online. There was dramatic growth of online purchasing. So at this point, every indication is uh, that the economy is doing pretty well. And the tax cuts have done a couple of things. First of all, it is going to cut tax rates for 80 to 90 percent of American people are going to see more in their paycheck starting probably in mid-February because the Treasury came out with the new with, withholding uh, levels for employers. And so on the individual side, everybody across the spectrum is going to see tax benefit, 80 to 90 percent of the people. Some of the higher end income people are not going to see any. In fact, in some states, they may have a, a slight tax increase at the higher level because of a, a change in the deductibility of state and lo local taxes. Uh, and then on the corporate side, you know, uh, you're going to see our companies, our C corporations, the bigger companies like Apple, be more competitive globally, and you're already seeing that because Apple said they're going to create a new facility and 20,000 jobs and, and, and bring some of the money they have overseas back to America. So I, I think the tax cuts are going to be a, a positive thing. You know, there's disagreement on that, I think, for political reasons. 
Uh, but everybody recognizes we had to do something with the corporate rate. Look, President Obama said we need to get the rate down to 25 percent. Well, it's, we put it at 21 percent. But, but I think uh, there's agreement that we had to do something on the corporate side. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to make sure that everything benefits the, uh, the, every worker, and then I think that's what's going to happen. Now, since you're on a tight schedule, we're trying to get as much in as we yeah. can. Uh, Health care seems to be an issue that keeps coming up with yeah. folks. Uh, um, where are we? Will we see any changes? Uh, is there good? They're bad? Because yeah. right now, I guess there's not a whole lot yeah. said. Yeah, I don't think there'll be any dramatic changes this year. I think you're going to see some smaller adjustments made uh, to try to stabilize the marketplace as it exists today. Uh, the politics of it are very difficult. And in an election year, I hate to say it, even though I don't think it's right, mm -hmm. Uh, we're not going to do much on health care, I think. I think my big thing that I work on is price transparency and other things to help bring the cost of health care down. The biggest problem we have in health care is the product itself costs too much money. Mm -hmm. We spend twice as much per capita on health care as the next closest developed country. So I think there's more, there's plenty of money in the health care system. I think it's being used inefficiently and ineffectively in many areas. Uh, and I think we need more competition and we need more price transparency to the consumer and drive those costs down. So other than that, I, I, you know, uh, I don't think there's gonna see any, we're going to see anything major this year in health care, okay, unfortunately. We talk a lot about politics, politics, politics. Yeah. The dynamics in Washington, D.C., I'm sure, are a little different because we now have a president who is not like any president that, we probably that, had. That, to that say the least. Yeah. Uh, how, how are the dynamics in Washington? You know, they're completely different than they were when President Obama was there mm -hmm. from a political perspective because, uh, you know, Republicans have the majority in the House. We have 51 votes in the Senate. Still don't have 60 votes, but we have the majority. Um, and then we have the White House. So that's much different than before because, you know, from a political standpoint, the Democrats always knew that they had, pre if policy got through to the White House, the, pre their, the president would veto things that they disagreed with, whereas now things will be signed into law. So the dynamics are, are quite different. Uh, I think it's a good thing that we have a president that is not typical because Washington, D.C. needed to be shook, shaken up. Uh, especially at the agency level. Uh, uh, you know, off camera beforehand, I was telling you, the frustration as a member of Congress is that you pass legislation that's supposed to do one thing, and then when it gets to the, one of these big bureaucratic agencies, you know, they take forever to implement it, and then they may not implement it in a way that was intended by the Congress. So Washington needs shaken up a little bit. The status quo needed shaken up, uh, and I think this president's going to do that. Now, we talk about a lot of different things, uh, and even off camera, we were talking a little bit about net neutrality, but yeah. you, as a congressman, you are a heart surgeon, a heart doctor, Yes. Uh, and yet you're in Congress. Now, yeah. all of a sudden, you need to know about computers and the internet. Then yeah, you need yeah. to know about uh, taxes. That's and, true. How do, you, how do you keep up, or how do you keep informed as to what's important and, and what, how to yeah. move? Well, first of all, uh, the, as, as a large group, the Republican Conference, we have a conference chair, Kathy McMorris Rogers, that... Uh, kind of congeals all that information on what's happening every week uh, in, into, uh, you know, you know the, the smaller version, the Reader's Digest version of what's happening in the week, so to speak. And then my personal staff, I have a legislative staff of three people, a legislative director and two legislative assistants, that the issues we have divided up amongst them, and they follow specific issues and what's happening in specific areas. So I have staff that do that. And then when things come up, they brief me on those things. And then I, and through them, and then through the committee staff, uh, you, you get up to speed. So it takes a lot of people, actually, to uh, keep you up to speed, all the way from uh, the Speaker's office to, the, to uh, Kathy Morris Rogers in the conference office, to the committee staff, to your own personal staff. There's a lot of people to help. Well, you're one person representing thousands of people. Yeah, approximately 750,000 people. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I'll see Larry, who's off camera right now, yeah. who, who follows you around, or I'll see him at, at meetings that I go to or, yeah. or uh, events that I go to. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to go to him and say, "Can next time you see Congressman Bouchon, will you tell him yeah, that we have these concerns? Absolutely. In fact, that's why we're, we're here for. And, and the thing is, we answer in our office thousands of questions like that every year. We get emails, we get letters, we get phone calls. And also, one of the things that congressional offices do that most people don't know about is constituent services. If you have a problem with Medicare or you have a problem with your VA benefits or whatever that may be, uh, we have staff in my office that specifically can help you. So, you know, your, your viewers should know that if there's an issue they have with the federal government, 
calling a congressional office, we have a staff of people that specifically are there just to help you. Now, one, one final fun question. Yeah. What's the last movie you've seen? Uh, I saw The Post, which is the new Tom Hanks, Meryl Streep uh, movie about the Washington Post and about the Pentagon Papers in the early 70s. Uh, and it was really, I'm kind of a history junkie. I kind of like nonfiction, right? Okay. And so uh, it, I thought it was very good, and it's very, very well done. Steven Spielberg directed it. Uh, in fact, I had the opportunity to go to the world premiere. It was when we were in session in D.C., the world premiere was in Washington, and uh, members of Congress got invited, and so I saw it there at a screening. Um, and then uh, what the fascinating part was is then Steven Spielberg and, and Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep was there, were there, so they were able to give some commentary, you know, before and after the movie about, uh, about how, what it was like to make the movie and how it was. So that's the most recent one I've seen. I'd recommend it. It's, it's really well done, uh, and it's a great story. Okay, so you, you're a regular person like the rest, although you got to go to the world premiere. I may have to go see it in a regular theater. Well, I mean, that was kind of <laughs> lucky, actually, because, you know, I happened to be in D.C. because we were in session, and they did it kind of during the week. And so uh, I was, you know, they, I happened to be there and uh, got lucky to see it. Well, I think I want people to know that, you know, all the congressmen that I've ever met, whilst you are in Congress, you're a big guy. I mean, you're an important person. But you guys are all regular kind of people yeah, we're we just can like, talk to. Yeah, we're just like everybody else. In fact, before this, I stopped at Wendy's over in Huntingburg and had lunch, you know, <laughs> a Baconator. So, you know, okay. we're just like everybody else. You know, I, we, have, uh, uh, we, you know, we have a big role to play. I take that very seriously. Right. Uh, but also, I do think it's important to connect with the people that you represent. And uh, we do that through my office. I do that through personal interaction. And, and, and so anyone that sees me out in public, in fact, I had someone from Far Best Foods come up to me over in, uh, in Hunt at the Wendy's and, 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 and asked me, are you Congressman Bouchon? We stood and talked for a little bit. So uh, I, I welcome that. I think it's, re it's really nice. That is excellent. We really appreciate you taking the time to stop well, by you're welcome. JTS. Thank you, and very good luck with the rest of the uh, session. When will you be back? Thanks. To We're work back again? in session early part of next week, Monday. So. Get back right back to work. We'll be heading for back a little to, bit. Heading back to work. Well, yeah. thank you very much, Congressman You're Bouchon. Welcome. Our guest has been Congressman Larry Bouchon, representing District 8. Thank you for watching WJTS. We're local people watching local people.